Welcome to Service Georgina on Rogers TV. I'm Mayor Margaret Quirk. Our shows are designed to bring you information on the various departments, programs, and services offered by the town of Georgina. Today, my guest for the entire show, because planning is a big topic, is Tolik Makarowitz, the Senior Policy Planner. Welcome, Tolik. Thank you, Margaret. Thanks for having me. Now, planning is often a, a, a huge topic for people to, to understand. It can be very complicated. Um, some people have, have many questions, and one of the biggest questions I get asked, and I know you probably get asked, is what can I do on my property? I, I bought this piece of, piece of property, I want to do this, or I want to do that. Where do people start to figure out what they can do on, on their property? Well, the best starting point is for people to identify what their property is zoned and what the zone that their property is located within allows. So my first uh, advice to people would be to either search the website. Uh, the website does contain our zoning bylaw, maps, and text. Um, there's also a guide because we understand that it could be a little bit difficult to right. find it within there sometimes. So there's also a guide that will help to navigate you um, in, in locating some of the pertinent information. Uh, if you are unable to or you have any questions about that, then you can always feel free to contact the building division right. and mm -hmm. they'd be pleased to help you uh, with identifying the zone and what permissions you have, have with on, respect on to your property. Zone. So let's say I want to open a restaurant and I found what I feel is the perfect property to, to open a restaurant, but the zoning doesn't permit it. What do I have to do? Well, uh, you need to go through a planning process. Uh, that would be a zoning bylaw amendment. So that would, through that process, you would be able to apply to the municipality to change the uses that are permitted within, within your property. Right. So th that's the first uh, advice that but I give yeah. them is, is finding out the zoning. If it doesn't comply and you wish to do something else, then you need to amend the zoning through, through a zoning bylaw amendment application. So there's obviously fees involved for, for that. So do you have an idea of what that would be approximately? Or? Yep, yep. So uh, for a minor uh, zoning bylaw amendment, it, it's approximately $15,000 for the application. For a major zoning bylaw amendment, I believe it's around $21,000. Now there's also fees that are uh, required from other agencies, um, uh, the Conservation Authority as well as York Region. Right. So it's always good to first touch base with the municipal planning staff and they can go over the process, what applications are required. Um, and, and the first thing that you're going to be required to do uh, after you meet with the staff is to actually submit for pre-consultation application. And what does that give them? What is the pre-consultation meeting? So pre-consultation meeting is an opportunity to discuss your proposal with members of staff. Uh, what happens is you submit the application with the required fees and then municipal staff review the application. We circulate it to the departments and agencies that would typically review and comment on these applications when a formal application is submitted. Mm -hmm. um, and then we would meet with you to go over your proposal, discuss our, our comments and concerns that we may have, and following that meeting you're actually provided with a checklist. Oh, okay. now, now, now the checklist is actually a checklist for complete application submission. So right. it outlines all the documentation, all the plans, all the studies that you're going to be required to submit your application so that we can deem it complete under the uh, Planning Act mm -hmm. and then that begins the process of circulating and getting comments, comments, holding a public meeting. And that's where people say, oh my goodness, that's that's huge. I just want to open my business. I bought that property. It was a good a good deal or I've owned this property for, for years. So that's where people get, get either bogged down or um, frustrated with, uh, with, uh, with the process. Now you had mentioned there's some um, minor and, and major um, application. What's, what's the difference between the, between the two? Yeah, so our fee bylaw actually sets out the differences between the applications, but generally a minor application is something that is, is, is considered uh, mo uh, small in nature, so mm -hmm. it doesn't really affect much beyond the subject property. Um, it only typically deals with one property. When we get into larger applications that deal with multiple properties or more complex um, uh, planning review is required. So say we require a really complex traffic study, we may require a planning justification Decent, report, right. an environmental report. Once we start getting into to more um, uh, justification being required um, and it reaches a larger area and impact, mm -hmm. uh, so not just the individual properties that are affected, uh, then that would constitute a major, a major. or, or yeah, major application. Major. Now, now the, the end res, um, decision obviously rests with the Director of, of Development Services, but there's a general outline if you actually look online at the fee bylaw and it sets out uh, considerations or criteria for them. So from the pre-consultation meeting, that's where maybe tell who all sits at, at those meetings, who, who would be involved in a meeting? 
So at these pre-consultation meetings, it's run by the planning division, but because planning is, is um, a combination of many, m a lot of input from many right. different departments or agencies, uh, we do get comments uh, from York Region. Uh, so that's from their, their land use planning and transportation departments. Uh, we get comments from the Conservation mm -hmm. Authority. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have input from the uh, town's engineering division, uh, the building division if necessary, uh, parks and uh, recreation and culture. Right. Um, so a host of different divisions uh, provide comment throughout the process. Um, and when we meet with the applicants, it, it'll be a smaller team meeting. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that'll really just be defined to, to typically the planning division and any other really pertinent members that have, have an impact on the application. Mm -hmm. So I've, I've done the pre-consultation meeting. I've found out what I need, the steps I need to go to. I've, I've paid the fees. So there's a, a number of other, as you said, levels of, of government and policy. So now I have to go through all that process. When does it get to the, the public stage where the public has the opportunity to make comment? Well, the public stage is uh, generally once we have received the application, we've deemed it complete. So that checklist that I indicated before, we make sure that all the documents that we've indicated have been submitted right. so that we can do the appropriate review. Once we've deemed that complete, we then circulate it to the agencies and departments. We put a public notice up that an application has been received. See? So that, mm -hmm. that goes on our, our planning division webpage. It's also posted in the Georgina Advocate, so mm -hmm. there's notice to the public. So that's their first um, indication that an application has been submitted. Uh, bef once we've got all our review in and we've got our comments back and we were able to facilitate a report, then we will do notice in accordance with the Planning Act. So mm -hmm. notice goes out to properties within 120 meters of applications for zoning bylaw amendment, official plan, subdivision right. or condo. So all properties uh, within that uh, prescribed area will right. receive a notice in hard copy from the town. Uh, that indicates the application, the, the merits of the application, what it's proposing to do. It also indicates when we are proposing to hold a statutory public, public meeting. meeting. Mm -hmm. um, so residents are able to provide comment through written form right. uh, throughout the process. Once they've received uh, any indication that there is an application, we welcome comments throughout the process as, as early as possible. Um, but then also they can come to the public meeting and voice their concerns in person. Right, and typically we have two public meetings, one where we're gathering the information. We may have some agencies or organizations that haven't provided comment yet. But the public meeting is really the real opportunity for members of the public and we typically hold those in the evening and, and gather that information. So if somebody's wanting to, to find out, maybe they're beyond that, that uh, circulation area, how does the average resident find out what's going on in the community for uh, various applications? So if a resident does not uh, receive a, a notice circulation, then they uh, c can frequent the, the town's webpage. Um, we, we do post notices and, and keep the notices up there for applicable applications. Mm -hmm. So if you look on the, uh, the planning and development webpage, you will be able to find the notices of ongoing applications. Uh, you can also stay uh, advised as what's happening in the community by either attending council meetings, watching, um, yep. watching the archive broadcast, um, you can also uh, br uh, peruse the, the agendas, agendas to see what's on agendas. As, as Absolutely. Well, everything's up. online, as, as I'm sure you're oh, yeah. well aware. We, we document everything. We so. document everything, and that's, that's important. Now, I know sometimes when an application comes forward, it almost looks like it's the town wanting to, to do these applications. The town's wanting to rezone a, a property for residential uses, or the town's wanting to, to change the zoning. It's not the, the town. Anybody has the opportunity to put an application in. That's what I'm trying to sort of say. Yes, that is correct. Uh, any owner of a property has the uh, authority to, to submit a planning application if they so wish. So it is, yes, you're correct. It's not the municipality. Uh, the municipality's role I in receiving these applications is to, like I said, receive the applications, process them, and to bring it to a public meeting and provide all the facts right. and all the information that is pertinent in order to gain comments from council members, right. the public, and in order to give uh, the council all the information that they need to appropriately make a decision. Susan. And so the recommendations may be to um, to do the rezoning. It, it might not be to, to do it or somewhere in between. So there's, it's, it's just because you ask doesn't mean you're going to get. 
That's correct. We always try to work with the applicants throughout the process. That's why it's always important to touch base with uh, municipal staff as early in the process as possible to, to start that uh, back and forth a discussion about the proposal, see what our concerns are, mm -hmm. um, uh, how similar things have been processed in the municipality to get a feeling of what may be expected right. throughout the process. Um, so yes, as we, we definitely encourage uh, as much participation early in the process. Yes, but. Yes. It's not always a guaranteed. There, yeah. there may be suggestions and revisions to change uh, particular aspects of a development proposal so that it meets our policies right. of our or, official plan. Or that it addresses the concerns of residents. Because certainly I know there's been times where we've heard the residents are saying that it's too much development or they're not happy with uh, you know all the, the elements on a, a zoning application. So we can send it back and... and say to the proponent, you know, you need to do some more work. Absolutely. Planning is a public process, and that's why we have these public meetings. And like you mentioned, we usually stagger it with two public meetings. So we'll have the first statutory public meeting that gets the requirement under the Planning Act dealt with, and that meeting is usually an information meeting to gather these comments and concerns from council and the residents. And as, as you're very aware, many times the, these uh, concerns from members of the public uh, are able to be addressed. Sometimes they're received and considered mm -hmm. in the context of the application Casey. and sometimes yes there there are particular elements that may be changed as a result of the public's input so exactly, it, yeah. it's a public process yeah people sometimes feel oh there's no point in, in going they've made up their minds they're, they're going to let the developer uh, you know do that that's not always the case no no it's not always the case and we try to work and try to balance the interests right. of, of the municipality um, of, of the developer and as well as the public so right. um, we're really trying to uh, manage all these different concerns Sorry. and all these interests and, and to come up with the best uh, plan or, or best development proposal possible. So what if I open a business and the zoning isn't correct? I, I either didn't know or thought I could, was told by somebody, not at the town, but did, I thought I could uh, open that restaurant in, in that uh, building. What happens if, uh, if, that's not, if the zoning isn't correct? So the uh, Municipal Law Enforcement Division, um, they operate on a complaint basis. Right. So unless there is a complaint received about a particular use that is not supposed to be on a property, so mm -hmm. like a zoning infraction we refer to it as, um, uh, nothing will be done. But once there is a complaint received, Municipal Law Enforcement Division will issue a notice to comply. Now the notice to comply has a time frame attached to it mm -hmm. and it gives you the option of either applying for planning approval Approvals to permit the use on the property mm -hmm. or to remove the unauthorized use or, or activity or, or development that has been done on the property. Okay, great. Um, we're going to take a quick break, but we're going to come back with uh, Tolik and we're going to get into the Keswick Secondary Plan Review. Um, I'm Mary Margaret Quirk, this is Service Georgina. Come back in a few minutes. Welcome back. I'm Mary Margaret Quirk, and this is Service Georgina. Joining me today is Tolik McCarowitz, the Senior Policy Planner for the Town of Georgina. We talked a little bit earlier in the first segment about uh, planning. Um, this time we're going to get into the uh, Keswick Secondary Plan uh, review and what that all entails, why we do a review, and what we're, um, what we're looking at for that. But before we get into those details, can you tell us about official plans and how secondary plans fit into the official plan? So uh, official plans are required for every municipality under the authorities of the Planning Act. Uh, now official plan is a long range land use planning document that guides growth and development within a municipality. So it is basically the, the, the Bible that us planners look to to see uh, what uses we are going to permit in certain places, mm -hmm. uh, what use, or what, which areas are, are directed for development, which areas are not to be development. Maybe they need to be protected for environmental reasons or agricultural right. reasons. So it really sets the overall vision for the municipality and how we want to grow over, over a 20 year planning horizon is generally the time right. frame. And we did an official plan review uh, the last term of, of, uh, of council. So we have that official plan looking at, at the entire um, area of, of the town of Georgina. There's secondary plans, and we have a Keswick secondary plan, we have a Sutton Jackson's Point secondary plan, we have a Pefferloss secondary plan, and we have the business park secondary plan. But at this time, we're looking at the review for the Keswick secondary plan. Tell me what a secondary plan is and why we're looking at doing the review of the Keswick one. 
So you mentioned uh, correctly that the official plan applies to all of the municipality, and it's an overarching, we call it a, a parent document. Now, mm -hmm. that refers to, uh, well, why we refer to it as a parent document is because we have secondary plan areas for right. the settlement areas of, of Keswick, Sutton Jackson's Point, Pefala, and the business park, like you mentioned. So that those areas are where growth and development is directed right. in accordance with provincial policies and, and York Region's official plan. So those particular areas have policies that are particular to that individual community or area. Right. So they look at the unique characteristics of the area, the features of the area, um, and, and through the process of, of reviewing and updating these plans, we get a lot of public input, uh, specifically from the residents that live in, in, that, in that community. Right. So it's really kind of a grassroots document that, that is supposed to be fed into by uh, the public, the development community, uh, different departments and agencies, council or steering committee. It, it's really uh, uh, a big, uh, big document that, that has input from a lot of different areas. So we did our last review. When was the last Keswick Secondary Plan review? The Keswick Secondary Plan review was reviewed last in uh, 2004. So as you can appreciate, there's been Things a lot of growth and development right. within the community. A lot of provincial plans have, have not only been created, but they've oh, also been amended, amended since changed. that time. Mm -hmm. So uh, the Planning Act requires that our official plans and our secondary plans uh, comply with upper tier documents. Right. Now what that means is we're in a two tier municipal structure right. here. So we have uh, York Region as our upper tier, and then we also have the, the host of planning documents from the province that we must comply with. So this review is really going to um, ensure that future growth and development within Keswick is appropriately accommodated in the right areas and that all of our policies actually fall in line with the policies above us from the region and the province. So with the details we'll be looking at is you know the, the amount of housing where we're going to put uh, housing in terms of uh, density and intensification. I think it's also going to look at other things like roads and transportation routes. So from a from a planning point of view, why do we look at at those finer details? Why don't we just sort of say, you know what, uh, we think it's just going to develop just fine on its own? Yeah. So planning is very complex when you think about all the different um, industries, different professionals that actually have input into it. So along with you know identifying where housing is to go, what appropriate densities we must consider, uh, we also look at different things like um, land budgeting, how much land do we need for residential areas, how much land do we need for commercial areas. Uh, we also are going to be updating and, and refining our, our natural heritage system. So we've identified uh, particular features, woodlots, woodlands, wetlands, that need to be protected for the long term. So this is really going to bring up the, uh, the policies into compliance with, with modern day policies, um, uh, policies of the day for, for environmental protection, uh, housing, a lot of rental housing right, and affordable a, housing. That's the, the big issue is, is our supply of housing and trying to, to get maybe a better mix of, of housing in terms of uh, maybe more apartments, maybe more uh, um, intensification use of the land that we, that we have. Yes, th th that's correct. So w we need to identify the types of built forms that we would like to see. Right now, Georgina has is predominantly a single detached uh, community. Yeah. Yeah. We, we have very little rental units. Uh, we, we have very little uh, walk-up apartments, that type of thing. We're, we're really looking for more diversity in the types of housing and built form that we see. So more semis, more townhouses, yes. more rental units, uh, more affordable housing. Right. Yeah, that, that, that's a big... Um, that, that's a big topic of discussion, not only in Georgina, York Region, Every, everywhere, Ontario, Canada-wide. Exactly. So, so. Now, the boundaries of the secondary plan, because there there are boundaries for that, and uh, maybe to tell us just where the boundaries are, and if it's um, if you're outside of that boundary. We're not looking at expanding at this time, is what I'm... So the, the Keswick Secondary Plan is bound by Woodbine Avenue on the east. It's bound by Raven Shoe on the south. On the north, it's generally bounded by Old Homestead, but then there's a little bit of a jog up yeah. and, and, and it kind of terminates just, just south of Roaches Point. And then on the very west terminus, we have um, uh, Cooks Bay, which, which is our boundary. So through this exercise, we will look at whether or not the, the lands within the current boundaries are sufficient to accommodate our growth needs 
for employment and for residential uh, for the next 20 year pl planning horizon till right. 2041. Um, through preliminary uh, evaluations, uh, we've looked at it and, and we don't believe that there is a need to expand the boundary to mm -hmm. accommodate our future growth. Yep. We, are, we, we, we believe that there is enough uh, land within uh, the current boundary to, to, to do that. Because we've that. got, uh, again, the opportunities for intensification. When it comes to the, the growth targets and how much we are supposed to grow, do we just decide how much we want to grow or not grow? Because people often say to me, why, why do we continue on with the growth? We don't want to see more subdivisions. We're, we're happy we moved up here to, to get away from the subdivisions. We certainly have some of the long-term residents that, that think back uh, 15, 20 years and, and see the, the changes and they want it slowed down or stopped. Or do we have the option just to say, no, we're, we're going to stay where we are? Yes, the, the points that you just mentioned are, are, are typical uh, concerns or comments that we hear when, when a development application is, is in a particular area. We get a lot of people who are, are you know, they don't want development in their backyard. We call it Nimbia, it's not my backyard. But um, we really have no say in, in what the numbers uh, or what growth, growth we need to accommodate. Right. The province, and through the growth plan, sets out the, the population and employment targets to the individual regions throughout Ontario. Right. Then it's up to the regions, such as York Region, to uh, do their own evaluation through their municipal comprehensive review, which is a review of their official plan. Exactly. And through that process, which, which is currently being undertaken by the region, they then uh, distribute the, the population and growth forecast to the individual municipalities. Mm -hmm. So when we receive those numbers, it's up to us yes. to take those numbers that we've been given and, and, and uh, allocate it uh, right. appropriately to the different areas, areas of so, the municipality. As we said before, there's some areas that we've identified as a growth area, Keswick being, being, being our pr predominant, growth, predominant area. growth area. Certainly there's, there's growth in, in the Sutton area, very limited growth in, in uh, the, the Pefferlau secondary plan. It's more infilling and, and you know, minor development. Minor and development. it's mostly related to the servicing that I was is just available, gonna say, the private servicing. Right. There is no municipal services in Pefferlau, so a lot of the development depends on that. Right. So when it comes to uh, the, the region, they all divide up and say, okay, you take this much growth in them, but we get to determine where in our municipality that goes. Yes, that's correct. So through the municipal comprehensive review that the region is doing, they're going to give us the numbers. And, and it's really, uh, we are at a good point right now with our Keswick Secondary Plan that we will be kind of feeding into the municipal comprehensive it is. It's review really good, good time. back and forth and we will be able to get those numbers and to implement them into our secondary plan right away. So there's not going to be a, a delay in implementing those figures. Good. Now where are we with the plan? Because we've talked about public input opportunities. How do people find out more about the details and where are we? Um, this is, doesn't happen overnight. Uh, the plan takes a few months, so maybe give us an update of where we are. Yeah, so we, we started the process um, generally at the end of uh, summer, beginning of fall in 2019, and it's going to take approximately a year to, to run through its entire course. There's three stages, the background information analysis, which is just, it is what it is, collecting right. a lot of the background right. information and the policy framework. Then there's concept development and policy development. So from that background research and from the new policy objectives from the province and, and the region, we then develop different concepts about how the, the plan can be structured and the right. policy framework. And then we get into the final stage, which is the actual plan drafting of the plan and, and the final approval of the plan. So throughout the process in each stage, there are multiple public uh, engagement opportunities. Right. Um, We've had some of those all already in 2019. That, that is correct. In 2019, we had uh, focus group meetings with uh, residents on particular um, uh, topics that the plan is looking to update. We also had workshops, which was kind of like a visioning session. Mm -hmm. We've had uh, various surveys that, that will be going out okay. throughout the process to gather input from the public. Um, but yeah, workshops are, are, are where we, we look to get the most input from, from members of the public and have an interactive kind of session with them to, to try and get their vision, their vision and their, and their they goals see, and, you know, and their objectives for what they see Keswick evolving into. Exactly, because people often feel that again, you know, no matter what I do, they've got their plan and they're going to move forward with it. Certainly we, there's some things that we are uh, obligated to do in terms of taking that, that growth, but how we utilize those numbers and what we do with it 
is is something that we need the the public input. So if people want to get more involved, where do they where do they go for the details? Absolutely, we we always encourage input throughout the entire process. As I mentioned, this is really um, a grassroots from the community. We really want a lot of input. So we have a dedicated web page, uh, Georgina.ca backslash KSPR, where they can go to see all of the current things that are happening. We mm -hmm. post all of our reports to there, uh, our background reports. We have frequently asked questions. What is the secondary plan? plan. Who is do undertaking it? What's the timing? Uh, so that is really kind of our hub to find out all the information. There's also information about how they can provide comments. They can provide comments to myself mm -hmm. or the dedicated email address that is indicated on the website. So throughout any part of the process, if they have questions, comments, concerns, please feel free to uh, get in touch with us either through email, come to the planning division council Sorry, the hub yep. on the third floor, and uh, I'd be more happy, or I'd be happy to speak to with them. anybody and discuss the process with them. So you're not alone on on doing this. You're the the point person on this, but there is a consulting um, team that's uh, that's involved with this uh, as well. They were the ones that did the the previous plan, and it's been interesting for them to see the the, the changes and how the the former plan has worked through the stages, and that's I guess what. Uh, that's interesting for them. Yeah, absolutely. So we've retained the planning partnership, who, who's a well-experienced uh, uh, planning consultant uh, firm based out of Toronto. So like you mentioned, they've done the, the original Keswick Secondary Plan. They've done our Sutton Jackson's Point Secondary Plan. They're very familiar They're with, very familiar with, with the community. Yeah. And, and it's really interesting and, and for them to c revisit this plan and be able to see. update it and see and what see. things they can change and yeah. how they can better the community. So they're really thrilled about the, the opportunity to, to be back Good. here and to, to can contribute to the plan and, and we're very excited to have them on board. It's great to, to have uh, you involved with it too. Um, this has been a great interesting show. Thank you very much Tolet for, for coming uh, today. That's our show for today. I'm Mary Margaret Quirk and this has been uh, Service Georgina. Next time uh, join us when we'll be talking to yet another department about services and programs offered by the town. Bye for now.